Hey guys, welcome to my interview prep video series. In this video series, I'm going to be covering a few helpful concepts for technical interviews. First one I'm going to be covering is recursion. So when you have a problem that you can split into smaller versions of itself, you can use recursion to solve it. Recursion is a method or function that splits the problem into smaller versions and call upon itself or the smaller versions. So let's dive in. So these are some things that you're going to need in every recursion problem. First one is a base case. Base case tells the function when to stop. Recursive case is the part that does the work. So the first thing you may have in this case is a few operations. Then you're going to have the recursive method call upon itself, but this time changing the input parameters. Next is scope variable. Let's come back to this one as we move forward. The next one is state. State basically tells you where you are in your recursive algorithm. So the pattern that we are going to be using to implement recursive algorithms is going to be helper method or wrapper function way. So now we're going to cover the broken down steps to tackle the helper method or wrapper function pattern. So let's go over what is going on here. This is the structure of helper method pattern for solving recursive algorithms. So what do we see here? As expected, a wrapper function and a helper method. So let's go through them separately and see what's going on. The helper method is the inner method that handles the main recursive calls. Then the outer function is used to instantiate scope variables. These scope variables can be used anywhere in the algorithm. So you see now we understand the definition of scope variables better here. Scope variables are variables in the pattern closure scope that can be accessed in the nested child scopes, i.e anywhere in the algorithm. So which one of these functions is going to be called by the user? That is the wrapper function. Helper is just a private method and it's not directly called. Therefore, it introduces extra variables. The outer function is also responsible for invoking the helper method. It is also responsible for returning results. So there is one last piece of this puzzle that we still haven't covered, and that's what happens inside of the helper method. So that's basically where a chunk of the operation happens. So inside the helper function, or the helper method, we first have a few operations that probably could happen, and then 
the recursive method calls upon itself, modifying the input parameters. So that's it for this video. I don't want to overburden you with too much information in one video. So let's digest what we have so far. And next we'll solve a couple of examples together. Also, the good thing about coding is that once you get it, it becomes like your second nature. So happy coding and I hope to see you guys next week or maybe earlier.